Crises are compounding for the people of Payton City, West Virginia, a small town of around 3,000 where residents already were living under a state of emergency because of a decades-long struggle for safe drinking water before Governor Jim Justice's March 16th statewide declaration in response to the coronavirus pandemic. Our town is in a double state of emergency, a petition recently sent to the governor by Payton City residents states. Not only are we worried, along with the rest of the country, about quarantining and staying safe from the coronavirus, we are also at high risk because we are left to consume contaminated water because we can't afford to buy it, we can't go out to buy it, and if we do, the shelves are empty. The petition was signed by 484 residents of Payton City, including Mayor Clyde Hawksgrasser, and calls on the governor to use his power to ensure residents are supplied safe drinking water, which would likely be delivered by the National Guard. Payton City residents have not had access to safe drinking water since March 14th. Although Justice only declared a state of emergency for Payton City in February this year, residents of the town have for decades been skeptical of the safety of their water supply, and for good reason. The city's water supply has long been contaminated with the dangerous chemical tetrachloroethylene, or PCE. EPA standards state that levels higher than 5 micrograms per liter of water are unsafe for human consumption. Recent investigations have revealed that, as recently as 2013, Payton City's water supply showed levels of PCE as high as 49.6. Payton City residents were not informed of this toxicity when it was discovered. Nor were they informed of this year's emergency declaration on February 4th, following a more recent investigation reported by the local newspaper, again showing unsafe levels of PCE. In fact, Payton City residents were not informed by their mayor about the state of emergency until February 20th, more than two weeks after it was declared. It wasn't until the second week of March when Payton City residents were informed the mayor had decided to place two 500-gallon water buffaloes on one side of town for residents to access safe water. However, many residents still were unable to access the water because it was only available for a few hours in the middle of the day while most were busy working, and many of those not at work had no access to a vehicle and were unable to carry the water for long distances. Even those fortunate enough to access the water said it was still not safe, and some posted pictures of the discolored water on social media. The water buffaloes were taken away after only a few days, then returned after several more days, and then taken away again on March 20th due to concerns related to the coronavirus pandemic. Shortly following the buffaloes being taken away the first time, local activists began circulating the petition to the governor, which they say would have garnered even more signatures if citizens currently were not forced to social distance and quarantine because of the coronavirus pandemic. As early as March last year, local activists Tanya Schuler, Lisa Davis, Rachel Kane, and Zoa Postelwaite have been organizing to ensure residents of Payton City have at least some access to safe water. That month, the women were able to distribute safe water to more than 400 families in Payton City. In February this year, when residents were informed that PCE levels had been measured at nearly three times levels considered safe for human consumption, the women, referred to by locals as mama bears, decided to start a GoFundMe page to help with purchasing water for regular distributions throughout the town. We're just worrying because this is the first time any one of us has seen it, something like this happen. And then to not have safe water coming to your home that you can use to drink, um, the stores are selling out of water. So, you know, we the first three water handouts was all done by what they call the Payton City Water Crisis Group, which is all of us ladies. There was four of us that organized and, and donated. Um, two of the, the last two times we handed out 7,860 cases of water. We were able to give 10 cases to every household. We also delivered to some of the area businesses and the schools when they were still open. Um, so, you know, there's no secret that us ladies have fought and fought and fought trying to get water here. And it's, it's just been, it's been stressful. We are less than two weeks away from running out of the 10 cases that we gave the families. Um, we, like you said, March 14th was the last time we handed out. And there are so many disabled, elderly people who do not have any way to get water or can't afford water. 
so yeah, it's been pretty stressful. I've had my phone has started ringing pretty heavily now the last past week and a half or so, wanting to know when's the next water handout, when are we getting water again, and all the donations. That was the last of the donations we had because there was a state of emergency. The mama bears also have recently started conducting surveys of locals to determine how many residents are suffering from diseases that could be caused or worsened by PCE. Thus far, surveys have revealed five cases of ALS, seven cases of MS, eight cases of acute leukemia, four cases of lupus, five cases of brain cancer, and countless cases of locals having trouble breathing. Despite their efforts, however, the Mama Bears and other Payton City residents have struggled to win over the support of Mayor Clyde Hawks Gresser, who they say has been hesitant to support their cause. Payton City resident Patty Wright said that although Mayor Hawks Gresser signed the petition that was sent to the governor, Locals are not satisfied with his handling of their struggle for safe water. Even though the mayor has signed the petition, communication that Wright received from Homeland Security stated that just two days prior, on March 31st, the mayor said Payton City did not need more water because it was not being used and because PCE levels had gone down to an average of 7.9 parts per billion, which is still above the acceptable level of 5 parts per billion. Wright said she'd been told on at least two occasions that the mayor has refused water for the town. The mayor has said in interviews that he still drinks the water from Payton City and he does not have any concerns about the harm it may cause. Asked whether he had spoken to someone from Homeland Security on March 31st, Mayor Hawksgresser said he, quote, does not remember dates. He said he did not tell anyone from Homeland Security that Payton City does not need more clean water. Asked why residents of Payton City believe he had said precisely that, the mayor said, quote, they don't know what they're talking about. Wright said, quote, many people do not find him to be truthful and have lost trust in him as our city leader. In an interview with myself, Mayor Hawksgrasser denied ever telling someone from Homeland Security that Payton City does not need more clean water. He also credited him himself with first bringing up that the city's water supply is contaminated and shrugged off criticism that he's received from his residents. Did you talk to someone from Homeland Security on March 31st? I have to remember the names. I've talked to people, I've been talking to people since it started from emergency management. But you didn't tell any of them. I've been talking to the state since this, since this first began. Have you told anyone in the past two weeks from the state that Payton City does not need more water? No. Uh, you're going to hear a lot of stuff, but I don't tell people we don't need it. Then why would people be saying that you said that? Um, I have no idea. They say a lot of things. Read Facebook. I've been beat up. I'm the one that's taking this. I'm the one that brought this forward and is fixing it. I'm the one getting beat up about it. When I asked the mayor if he understood why residents of Payton City would be confused and frustrated, about why they've been struggling to secure clean water for so long, he hung up on me before I could finish the question. You did not tell anyone from Homeland Security. I'm the one that published, the one that published it in the paper and told everybody what the dangers of it was. And I'm the one that brought it forward. I'm the one that brought it forward. They had raw water. Do you understand? Do you see why residents of your city would be confused as to why they've been struggling?